Welcome to the Jet Wait. I'm Dan Vollmeyer, and we've lost two games. Uh. Defensive coordinator Mike Pettin, are you sleeping? Oh, right, under two minutes in the fourth quarter. Of course you're sleeping. Mike, what's going on here? It was nice to, to be able to kind of relax a little bit and, and get the batteries recharged. But should you be doing this during the game? I love coming to work. Of course you do. It's where you get your best shut eye of the week. Start the show. <laughs> Number six, Sanchez somehow blows past the 900-pound Vincent Wilfork and gets the six, but it leads to a scuffle on the field. Wilfork not looking happy here. Then again, if I had a receding hairline like that, I'd probably look not so happy all the time, too. Speaking of terrible hair, Donald Trump was at the game, here with Jet owner Woody Johnson. During the game, I heard the two tycoons discussed how best to tell Schottenheimer... You're fired, you're fired, you're fired, you're fired. You're fired. Ah! You are terminated! Terminated? No! No consensus yet on how to drop the axe, so for now, the plan's just to make Shoddy hit a New York City nightclub with Plaxico Baby. and hope this little Schottenheimer problem just goes away on its own. Baby. I can see the headline on the New York Post now. Shotty's been shot. Baby. Well, I don't see myself going anywhere. Yep, you're probably right. So forget that whole Plaxico shooting you in the leg thing. That whole joke was actually... The stupidest thing in football history. Number four, we're keeping it on Plax, who as of late's been firing on all cylinders. 17 had this touch here against New England. To Burris. Touchdown, Jets. And also made this incredible grab in Denver. Even the ref was excited. That's the most obnoxiously animated reception gesture I've ever seen. I love it. Number three, now going into Denver, we knew adopting to the high altitude would be a concern. Here we see Mangold clearly having difficulty getting oxygen to the brain. However, not having difficulty adjusting to the high altitude, Broadway Joe's trousers. Damn, son, who needs Denver? Those pants are always pulled up a mile high. Seriously, let's get that side judge to do the same thing to Joe's pants and get those pantalones down to a normal height. Number two, back to the Meadowlands, and it's a big stick by my man Pooh. That guy, Rapati, Pioa, Pia, help me out, Mike. <laughs> and Jet fans shower him with a poo chant. Poo! Poo! Poo, huh? Get saluted by the crowd. Everyone loved it except Sanchez, who was back behind the row of telephones freaking out because he thought fans were chanting not for Poo the player, but Poo, as in what everyone saw Sanchez do in his pants one week earlier in Buffalo. Oh, man, that was awesome. I think I speak for Sanchez when I say, thank God we weren't wearing our white pants in Buffalo. And number one was part of a new segment we call the Jericho Cotchery Crotch Shot of the Night. Bart Scott pursues the play, goes airborne, and then nails Poo right in the groin. I know the big thing in New York right now is Occupy Wall Street, but right here, Bart Scott is all about Occupy That Crotch. We joke, but this is pretty serious stuff, and the man at the center of the controversy, Bart Scott, was interviewed by NBC's Bob Costas. Take a listen. How do you feel about what has happened? I think it was a wonderful moment. In every aspect? I mean, it really was a, a spur of the moment type of deal. What did happen? You know, um... Are you denying that you had any inappropriate sexual contact? Right, right. Never touched genitals? Never. Oh boy, Bart, not looking good there. I think you might be going to jail. Can't wait! And that's the show. One question for you, Gang Green. Will the real New York Jets please stand up? Jets, please stand up. Please stand up. Please stand up. And will our lazy defensive coordinator please wake up? May I have your attention, please? Will the real Defensive coordinator, please wake up. Nope, he's still out like a light. So am I. Peace. Yeah.